guys it is a great morning here in Goroka Jeff and I are going to Yambai Talk and if you remember anything about Yambai Talk this is the place that we did the solar panel project almost exactly a year ago so here we are in Goroka and we are heading up to Yambai Talk like I said 110 nautical miles away which takes us right by our tallest mountain here in Papua New Guinea, just shy of 15,000 feet, Mount Wilhelm. We're expecting some clouds right in this area right here because, well, there's always clouds right there. It's a really tight area. But what I think I'm gonna try to do is actually have Jeff fly the low route through there just to force ourselves to be flying around weather. So last week when I was out there with Jeff, the doctor said he'd like to do an official thank you for the solar panel project. We have 500 kgs of cargo heading out there, dropping it off, picking up seven passengers, and heading on to WeWAC. So last week they told me that they're going to be giving me some Belums, which are like a handbag that they make here in Papua New Guinea, as well as some bow and arrow stuff. I thought it'd be really cool to be able to give that kind of stuff right back to the patrons and members, the people who support this channel. So when I head back to the States this summer in June, I'm going to be bringing that stuff back with me and then sending it out to you guys. Well, as you guys can see behind me, it's a beautiful day. We're heading out that way today. 35 minute flight out to Yambai Talk, so let's get going. I thought for this particular flight, uh, we're gonna go there a different way that we don't normally go. We're actually gonna go around the right side, the north side of Mount Wilhelm, because it's such a beautiful day out and because I'm just wanting Jeff to continue to fill in all of the mental map of Papua New Guinea. So we're gonna go different ways every time we can, even if it adds maybe a minute or so, and that's probably all it's gonna add to this flight. Good morning, Kirk Tower, November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, Gurkha Tower, morning. Yeah, request taxi, Yambai Talk, 2 POB, November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, taxi 17 left, enter backtrack. Uh, Q1H 1020. 1020, enter backtrack and line up 17 left, November Tango Zulu. All right, so our trims are set. Our point is gonna be the taxi way. We wanna see 50 knots by then. If we don't have that, then it's gonna be full reverse, max braking, flaps up. If we're gonna be going off the end, it's gonna be cut off, pull off, and turn off. After rotation, it's gonna be EPL. We have um, power failure. EPL, that doesn't work. It's gonna be idle, feather, cut off, pull off, turn off. And then we're at pretty much gross weight, so 96, 90. And 80 on our flap speeds. I'm going to put in the Asaro North instead of the Asaloka. Okay. Uh, just because I think it'll be a little bit more direct where we actually want to go. And we might want to mention that to him too, just so okay. there's no confusion just for why we're going that far north. 
Circa Tower, November Tango Zulus ready for departure, and we're going to be um, tracking for this R North Gap, then to Yamaitak. Tango Zulu, one second left, I make right then, clear for takeoff. One seven left, clear for takeoff, right turn, November Tango Zulu. Speed's five. Is there green? Continue. Wild how hazy it is today. I think it's going to be another one of those stinking hot days. Like yesterday. Tower, November Tango Zulu, departed time 57, 6,800 on climb, the 1, 2,000 will be tracking, uh, 302 up to 10 miles left of track, estimating Yambai Talk 38. Right of track. Uh, correction, and that's, it'll be um, right of track, November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, see again, deviation. 10 miles right of track. I'm at Tango Zulu 1-2000, must be 1-2-0-1, no contact 6 5 9 8 3 8 SR North. 1-2-0, decimal 1, 6 5 9 or 8 or 6 5 3 at SR North, November Tango Zulu. Yeah, so one of the reasons why I wanted to go through the Jimmy Gap specifically is just so that we can make a mental note of how the terrain is, so that because it's, there's a specific hill there that, well obviously all the all the clouds and stuff build up on all the all the hills. So if you can remember that there's this one hill there, if you do ever have to go through it low, if you remember that, then you're like, oh, if I just go around this hill, it'll probably clear up. Because it's, it's kind of like a blind corner where you have to go all the way to the corner before you can even see through. Okay. So we might even level off at 10,000, because I don't think 12, I would like to go down a little bit lower through no, we the don't need to, okay. So let's do that, let's level off at 10, we'll just let Moore's be know if we're sure. ended. But yeah, the whole thing, I really don't want you to have to even use the um, nav nav, I'd rather you just do like pick out points, because that's gonna, re that's gonna force you to go, oh yeah, that's how the hill went, and that's where I went around, kind of thing. Force one, two, zero, decimal one, over particular Zulu. November Tango Zulu wants to be good one in your head. November Tango Zulu is overhead to Saro North Gap. Um, mended altitude 10,000. Estimating Yambai Talk 42. November Tango Zulu 10,000. I confirm Yambai Talk at 42. Affirm November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, Roger. All right, let's bring this bigger map open so we can kind of see where we're going. Here's the Jimmy. We're going for okay. that. And you can see how the terrain kind of comes around. You actually have to go down. This is really what I want to make note of, because if you're coming back this way or something, sure. you have to remember, like, you're going to have to go way around to be able to see out. I mean, it's always, it's almost always open because it's the end of the valley and it's very low. It goes all the way down to, like, 5,000, where all these mountains up here are, like, probably 9,000 at least. Let me just see up through Senbai area. Uh, yeah, 85, 90, 300, things like that. So it drops down quite a bit. So it's a great option to to get out of that valley if you okay. had to. All right, so yeah, we'll get across this ridge and then be a left turn kind of for the Jimmy gap there. And the train is just insanely steep. All right, good. There are some clouds in the Jimmy. I was kind of hoping there would be. That will force us to go a lot lower Good. and we'll work our way work up the our valley. Way in. We've yeah. got the extra fuel now too. I also put on an extra 50 on top of our VFR. Okay. So we really, we'll just follow the river, I guess, all the way up in there. Good. All right, I'll keep descending. I got lots of space down there to maneuver. Yeah, bird right. diving off the cliff there. I missed it. Oh, it's right, oh there. right there. Whoa. Falling out of the sky. Yeah, he was just literally falling out of the sky. I think the reason why I'm I'm making you guys, you and Brad both, do these type of flights where we're forcing ourselves to get down in places like this is because when I first started, my tendency was go on top every time. Yeah. Every single time. 
we're going on top. And then I find myself really struggling to be able to get down from being on top, as opposed to, oh man, like, it's of, not know, that knowing, difficult. Knowing the terrain, knowing how the clouds interact with that, and then having some confidence, like, okay. Exactly. We'll probably have to drop down quite a bit down to okay. the ground getting up here, because we actually need to go through that, well, it looks like a sort of a, a gap down, a, a hole down in there. Okay. Super hazy up there, but we'll just keep tracking forward and, and then slowing down if I need to, if we can't see enough on the other side. Yep. That'll be, yeah, that'll be the lowest spot there. I'm gonna start slowing down a little bit. All right. And it's hard to tell, I don't know if it is rain, it might be rain, like uh, there's, there's a rainbow. There's a rainbow, so it might Definitely be sprinkled. Definitely moisture, yeah. If it is yeah. kind of sprinkling like this, if I were you, I'd get away from terrain. I wouldn't be coming the edge. I'd be like going over here because, as you can see, as you're coming in, it's just shadowing. Hard to see, you yeah. can't see the ground as easy. So I want to be more in the center of the valley because it's going to be wider there and it's going to give me more visibility. Okay. Well, it, is, it does kind of create a lot of shadows, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes it much more difficult. All right, let's just zoom in a little bit here. It looks like that direct track where it gets sunniest, but it's not, uh, like it looks like the ground actually goes even down further up that way. I'm definitely gonna have to descend if I want to stay visual. Yep, I think we are. For sure, because these clouds are getting lower right here in yep. front of us. So we're looking at the sun I'm on the ground. I'm seeing light on the other side. Does that give you confidence that you can keep tracking? I'd keep tracking for now. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to go low. We're going to have to just follow the river. Is going to be your, your best bet. Because we know that the terrain is the lowest there. And we might have to go back up, because, yeah, we're kind of coming into this area where... Where it's really low. Um, although I'm seeing more okay. light on the ground over there. So let's just keep an eye on where the river goes okay. and track along it. This is a good place. Get over here because now you've got the river and we know that it turns. Okay. But we can't see around, see around this tree right here. Or this. Descend a little bit more. That gives me space to turn 500. there. 500. see up in there. I mean, it's just that low. It is. It is kind of hard to see up in there. So go around this cloud here and keep... I'll be climbing though because we're getting up closer up now. We're gonna come over here and now go over to that corner over there so then we can see around the next bend for the river. We're just quickly looking at this too, just making sure that we're not getting ourselves to a point where it's all red. Low, yeah, lowering terrain, or we don't have lowering terrain. And hopefully we don't have to get back out of here at all. So we can pop up out of, uh, out of it there. This is getting really tight in here, so. We're gonna have to go, um, we wanna go down. Okay. At least until we can figure out where we're gonna go. 500. Okay. See, now we're seeing further on up there. Sure, okay. Let's okay, keep it down below the clouds. Okay. I know we're low, but we're continuing to see, we're gonna follow the river until we get further on up. I think that it's gonna continue to stay available to, for us to get going, but okay. I don't wanna be scraping the clouds because I don't wanna go in Yeah, and then... Hey, we're looking out there. We're not looking ahead of us. Okay. We're going, okay, yep, let's go. So let's just start heading over that way, continuing following the river because see way out there, we can see 15 miles at least. Okay. And we're seeing light on the ground. Okay. see more bright shining down on the ground, yep. which means that there's going to be some holes in the clouds. We have to, we can always go back up potentially there. 
they're pretty a big area so still we might want to actually I'm just trying to think we've got quite a ways yet to go okay um, yeah okay we might want to potentially head over that way and start trying to climb up and out of here because I think what was going to happen which, which way do you want to climb out? Uh, it was that way but I think it's too late now I don't think you're going to be able to climb out climb that maybe if right through there we probably can let's do that and that way we don't get stuck down here Now let's just stay right above it, just so that we don't get stuck, because we only have VFR fuel, and I don't want to have to circle and everything like that, and then potentially get screwed and have to, like, you know, now we're going to go into a reserve. All right, well, actually, it opened up quite a bit more over here now that we can see a little bit. It is kind of hard in those pike and pines to just visualize where the best position is to be. Like, what are you kind of... I'm looking at the river, okay. because... The river is going to be my absolute lowest option, okay. and typically, like if you look at kind of where the clouds were, they weren't over the river; they were over the terrain. So, okay. however, the hills came out. That's where the lowest clouds were. So, if you're directly over the river, that's going to be I'll your best option every time. Yeah, you can even see here, it's like there's puff of clouds everywhere, but they're not over the river, they're always over the land, and all these buildups here are the land. And this is where you can see how tight everything is, huh? and you have to kind of go way over in these hills, and then way around this, okay. and you don't even see around the next corner either. Just kind of making an evaluation as you're, you're tucking up, looking in. Do I got yeah. room on the other side or not? I kind of take it in sections where it's like this section and then I'm way over there and I can come way over here and go back out. If I can see into this next valley, I can go through this gap here, turn around and come back to this one. If I can't continue on out that way is the way I do it. Then, then if you've got enough room to maneuver in that valley, then you can look Exactly. Up. See how it opens way up so you yep. come out there go all the way in there and then you can turn back around and come back out if you can't see around this next corner and start about right kind of where we are right here that little ridge is where a lot of times the clouds will sit is at 1800 feet okay. so seven, we want to be 90 kind of overhead and then 80 turning our base and then want to be 75 um, as we're getting ready to turn off final slow into 70. Okay. And then 1500, 1250, and then I think it's, we're shooting for those trees right at about 900. Lights and inlet. Kind of get over this side and then bank it. That'll give me a good look at the runway, good look at the windsock. Okay. Winds right now are coming up the valley, which is great means that you'll have probably like just a quartering headwind or something okay. as opposed to the tailwind. There's like a big dirt patch right at this, right at the windsock. Um, just to maybe a little bit past that is a great place to touch down, which is just, so the windsock is in between the first cone and the second cone. Okay. So if you land between that windsock and the first and the second cone in, that's a good spot. You want to be that 1250. Going to 80. Go flaps. I know it's a headwind. It'll probably die down though. Alright, so 
200 feet or 200 our descent rate's coming in, two knots fast, and three knots of headwind. There's 650, five knots fast. We're committed. Committed. Nicely done. All right, well, um, if these guys remember that we're coming back today, I'm gonna walk around here, probably show you the clinic again real quick on the project we did last year. And like I was saying, if they do give me any BLMs or anything like that, I'm gonna be bringing them back to the States so that I can give them out to the people that support this channel, patrons, members, things like that. Take two, I'm out here with Brad now. Last time they didn't have things organized like we were hoping to. I'm out here with Brad. He just did his very first landing out here, which was excellent. We had a 11 knot crosswind, quartering crosswind, and a two knot tailwind. MAF just landed as well, so it's a busy day out here. Hey, morning, Patrick. Yeah, morning, good morning. May I good morning. Yes, morning, I'll get there. Yeah, I'm nice, but hey, grass blow you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me talk, thank you, Low Shed Line. You support him this project and it long. Uh, community service at post. Uh, me talk thank you long people support previous solar and uh, all uh, I mean uh, British battery now mawas me talk thank you lord this plan me plan on upload him some plus something um, traditional something me plus are making um, me plus have a killing pick lo Passion to open up, me plus ground. Um, me plus a bilas na sing sing, put him long hand. Eight grass, all this lot to open up. Me plus a walking, making more and bright prices. Nice. Me plus give present long all the side line the support long end. Yeah. So when I get back to the states, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking all this stuff back to the states with me and then shipping it out to some of you guys who have supported this project here in Yambai Talk. Just a huge thank you for. Helping out with the solar panel and also those of you up with also the lawnmower and different items like that. So yeah, big huge help for us all and they sure do appreciate it, I know. So this problem you put him low hand blow you, huh? Yeah, all same? Hand blow you all same. Okay. Like he is straight. Oh, oh on, on top low arm blow me, huh? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. All right, nice. Now bone arrow. Bone arrow. <laughs> I'm never kind of so this plow I'm low one I'm straight. I'm just low peak or this plow low never kind. This plow low peak. <clears throat> this plow two I'm one kind low peak. Okay. Assemble animal two. All right. Moruk. Now time you shoot him or uh, pig him by how I'm much plow arrow I'm by take low kill him him. This plow I'm but <clears throat> I'm gonna take him two plow or three plow. Two or three. This plow huh? I'm mean, two plow or three plow. Okay. One kind. All right. Yes, <laughs> I'm nice plow. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, All right. Okay, okay. you, you can put him a little something inside of Bilum. Thank you. Oh, me, I'm a master. Now, too, I think all who have been giving all this project and by a master for kissing some, some yeah. uh, traditional something or PNG, too. So, yes. so anyway, um, they were going to be doing like a traditional dress up and things like that, but. It, they guess I was just told that they had a death out here last night, so it's kind of tombu, like not allowed, kind of almost offensive if they were to actually dress up and make a big huge hoorah thing. So they were expecting to do something a little bit different. But either way, thank you for those of you that have helped out either with the lawnmower project, I was just talking to Brad about that, or with the solar panel project and things. Uh, we gave out some rugby balls out here a little while ago. But uh, yeah, give the video a thumbs up and um, stay tuned for more projects similar to this. Um, I know that they're always in need for, you know, different project, community projects and things. So thank you, Patrick. Now, thank you. I'll get that.
You guys ever wonder what tapioca looks like? Here we go. That's what all these bushes right here are. Called tapioca here. And then we've got, um, let me just show you around in this garden right here. All these just kind of like weed looking like things. That is all sweet potatoes, which is one of the biggest staples here in Papua New Guinea, at least in the Highlands area, is sweet potato. We've got a school right over here. I've shown you in a couple other videos um, walking around there, they're always hurting for teachers. They never have enough. And then when they get the teachers out here, the teachers didn't grow up in bush places like this. They grew up in town areas. So it's, um, it's a huge adjustment culturally for them as well. And many times the teachers just jet out of here after a couple months because they're like, yeah, this, this isn't the type of living that I want to live in anymore. I want to go back to the city. All right, here we got um, a struggling banana tree. These are banana trees over here as well. And then this little building right here, this is um, their medical clinic. The solar panels are just on the other side of it. I've walked through that if I can remember. I will actually link the video where we actually talked with Patrick, showed you inside kind of what we have here. They have a cooler here for their vaccines and stuff. Morning. Well, it really is beautiful out here. We've got, uh, looks to be an avocado tree right here. Either that or mango. Their leaves kind of look very similar. Although it looks like avocado to me. It's interesting, just the different locations that we go, the different style of housing. Every place is a little bit different. The more seepage down by the river, they have houses on stilts. Here we're only at like 500 feet MSL above the sea level um, and their houses are very similar to the ones that we have in the highlands. The walls are just made out of the stuff called pit pit. It's like kind of bamboo but a little bit thinner, you know, like that big and they just beat it all out, flatten it out and then weave it. It's a really long process and oh, coconut just fell. And then um, the roofing and stuff is just a grass that they've layered up many, many layers and yeah, they do leak sometimes. Um, and the houses, I think, typically last around five years before they have to build another house. So all of these big, tall, grassy things, that's sugarcane. Um, yeah, you can see down here, they just grow and they, I don't know, they probably get, probably get to be like six, six feet or so tall. This right here is taro. Well, that's about it for here for guys. Uh, Jeff and I are heading on to Wewak and then back to Goroka for the day. Thanks for taking the time to watch. See you guys next time.